What's going on guys, it's me again, and here's another update on the 1964 Dodge Custom 80. This is a continuation off of part one, and I'm still trying to get to the timing chain, and I think we're almost there. All we need to do is just put a, uh, put a couple half inch bolts, half inch bolts on the, uh, the crankshaft pulley. So we're pretty much going to be removing that pulley today and potentially uh, getting to the timing chain cover after we pull the dampener off. So uh, if you guys can see that from here, uh, there's six bolts on the pulley and I can't, uh, there you go, I believe that's the sixth one. These bolts are most likely covered in a lot of dirt and silt. Uh, I just kind of went the extra, well, extra mile I guess, to kind of clean up those uh, bolts a bit so that I can get a better snag on them with my socket. Also here's a high tech tool called a wire brush and I use this to kind of uh, clean around inside of the pulleys uh, little inner diameter area because those fill the dirt and silt. Like yeah, I think you can see that right there at the tip of my finger down there. That's where all the dirt, that's all the dirt that was coming out of this pulley here. So grab yourself a brush and get busy. Also I forgot to mention that all these, uh, the bolts that you see up in there, they're not uniformly spaced. So it's important to keep track of the orientation uh, that the uh, the harmonic balancer is to the uh, crankshaft pulley. So what did I mean by uh, they are not unif uh, the bolts are not uniformly spaced? Well, the crankshaft, um, the the balancer and the pulley itself they only fit in one certain location where all the bolt holes line up, all the six bolts will line up. If you just haphazardly just stuck the pulley on there and you bolted them all down and then you find out there's three or two bolts that don't line up, well, that's, you just have to uh, remove the pulley and realign it until all the bolt holes line up with the uh, dampener itself. In this case, it's a little bit harder, harder to see, excuse me, yeah, so I'm gonna show you a little uh, tip here to kind of keep track of the orientation of the pulley to the dampener. So get yourself some scribes or some of these little picks. And what I did on the crank pulley was, uh, let's see if I can see it. Okay, it's a little bit hard to, hard to see. Now let's leave the light there. There's there's a scribe or a scratch I made on this incision and if you look back here I made a scratch over here so that when I put this pulley back on later well that you know which orientation to put it back on. I suppose they're not too tight who knows maybe they might be welded in with all the dirt. <sighs> Time to skim my knuckles. <sighs> Actually that wasn't too bad. Moving on to the next one I don't want to completely unbolt that one. And just make sure the socket is seated because your day is going to get worse if you strip one of these bolts. Or round them off, excuse me. Alright, that's the third one. So all of the uh, six bolts on the crankshaft pulley is off. So I'll just proceed to uh, kind of give the pulley a little bit of light taps with the mallet and it should come loose. The crankshaft bolt should not be attached to the crankshaft pulley. Well, there's much rejoicing. The dampener, I mean, uh, <laughs> dampener, the pulley is indeed coming out. So this is real good news that I don't have to use some other special tool to remove this pulley. Wow, 
Well, uh, that kind of let go all of a sudden. Here's our prize. Uh, your uh, crankshaft pulley. Look at that. Six bolt patterns. Yeah, I hope that you guys can see that because from up here I can't really see much. Yeah, that's the dampener all right. It's kind of pretty cool to see the uh, original, or some of the original paint is still in there. Some uh, history once again. And this is a massive one and one quarter bolt. But um, I'm running into a new issue now. I was about to use this impact impact uh, wrench to remove the pulley, or I mean the uh, crank bolt that's down there. But there's a new issue. If you can see that, this is not gonna not gonna fit down there. This is barely enough space as it is yeah see that not enough and it's butted up against the radiator so i think either the radiator comes out or i have a really dastardly plan of getting that uh bolt out the dastardly plan i have in mind with the cheater bar is i'll put the socket on with the cheater bar and then wedge it up against something that will not move and then when i crank the motor it will the the crank will turn, but it'll unbolt the crank bolt as I'm cranking the engine. See, you see what I mean? It's it's pretty dastardly planned, but the the thing that kind of um, turns me away from this entire thing is if that cheater bar comes loose, it's gonna smack into something and probably break something. It's either removing the cooler lines and removing the radiator so I can get the so and the impact wrench down there, or do my dastardly plan with putting a socket and a cheater bar in there and then having the engine loosen the bolt for me. So uh, I think I have decided that I am going to indeed put a cheater bar on the crank bolt and then crank the motor over with probably like a remote starter switch and that will allow me to loosen the bolt on the crank and uh, I believe if you're doing the same thing that I'm gonna do, you have to figure out which direction the engine is rotating. In my case, this and this engine, from my perspective right here, it rotates clockwise. And so if I put a cheater bar and just lay it flat against the ground or some part of the frame against, you know, somewhere in that general right direction over there, the bolt should loosen. So just like on the past video where I was uh, testing for chain slop and such, I'm going to use the uh, remote start switch to rotate the engine and hopefully it'll get the boat loose. And here's the connections for the uh, remote start switch. The big positive battery wire that's on the solenoid will need to be connected with one of these leads. Uh, should be right around back here. Just don't shock yourself or drop a socket down there or a wrench whatever you whatever you have yeah electrocuted we wouldn't want that and collect your connect your other lead to the small solenoid wire i'm going to be hanging on to the socket while this engine rotates while it's wedged up against a frame because you see this bolt here that's not much space for the socket to go down to and it won't just stay in there it'll just kind of fall off if i take my hands off the socket so I'm gonna take my hand here and keep my hand there with the socket on while I rotate the engine that way uh, be sure to have some safety glasses for this because if the socket does shatter we don't want to go into our eyes because our eyes are a rare commodity now these days take my socket here and keep an hand on it Coming right off. I think you guys can see enough right there. 
So now all we need to do is just pull the damper off, pull the chain cover off, and we are going to be installing that new double roller timing set. So it is a oil seal down here, and it is leaking oil. So I I can bet that the oil seal on the dampener is probably shot. I don't know. I won't know until I see inside. So this is where you're going to be playing a little bit of a musical chairs in a way, or musical mu musical drain pans. And what I mean, or drain, drain catch cans, is because we're going to be replacing that uh, drain can that's down there that was catching all of our radiator fluid, and we're going to swap it with one that will uh, catch oil. Because I believe when I pull the dampener off, the oil will kind of spill out of it because it is kind of near the level where the uh, oil pan is. So this is the uh, catch pan I'm going to be using. It's 16 quarts, I believe. Uh, yep, says right there, 16 quarts. Yeah, this will work nicely just to catch any residual oil that's going to be falling out where the uh, dampener gets removed. So this is the uh, puller set that's, uh, that I'm going to be using today to pull the uh, dampener off. Uh, I believe this is good enough for what I'm going to do with it, but there are specific pullers. Like this says right here, ideal for removing harmonic balancers, but there's a, another type of a puller. It's like a round version of this. It's it's actually round instead of this little crow's foot shape. So I got my puller set ready, or partially ready. I just need to attach two more bolts on this attachment here, or yoke, I believe that's what it's called. And have some oil ready. I have some spare 10 weight 30 oil here, and we're gonna be lubricating this shaft here. So this is the setup on how I got uh, this one over here was a 13. This one's over a 13 and the big Shaft down here. I believe was we're going to be using a yes a 14 uh, I already did it. It's already at zero top dot center before the number one spark plug is, is gonna fire But I'll sh show you as of now down here It's just about zero So as before, have your safety glasses on when you're going to be pulling the dampener off because we don't know what's going to happen. Either the dampener's going to come off nice and easy, or the socket's going to explode into a billion pieces because, I don't know, some socket manufacturing defect or stuff like that. I don't know. But anyway, keep your, cell, keep your eyes safe because, well, you need your eyes. All right, so we're going to start cranking down on it and make sure that your the centerpiece is centered more or less. Oh, whoops, I still have the uh, half inch still attached. Let's uh, let's attach the right sockets. That'll help quite a lot. Dampener is slowly but surely moving and keep an even pressure. Like, don't, don't be, like, yanking back and forth on it. Just go slow and smooth. <laughs> uh, you can use a open end or box end wrench if you like here. Also, so the wrench is not necessary. I think that's it.
And there you have it, your vibration dampener. Looks like it has, it is, has worn a groove into it, but it's not really leaking any oil, so I think I'm gonna leave it as is. We're gonna inspect the keyway to the uh, to the timing mark indication if it's correct or not. Well, and there you have it. There is your vibration dampener. There's your keyway to the crankshaft. The condition of the rubber looks pretty good. I mean, it's actually, you know, it's still supple, surprisingly. So, uh, I believe there's another channel that I was kind of watching from. There's, there's this guy's channel named Bob. And he was going over how to tell if you're harmonic or your dampener's health condition is okay is measure the or look at the uh, crankshaft keyway location and said it's roughly should be 90 degrees and indeed it is it's eh, it's roughly 89 so yeah it's it's close enough so here here and the timing mark is there and so this is good well, since we got the uh, vibration dampener off, we are completely ready to uh, start taking apart the uh, timing chain cover. So the socket that is required to take off the timing chain cover uh, bolts are going to be half inches. Uh, I apologize that the camera is a little bit not centered onto the uh, the timing chain cover, but this is the best I can do while unbolting at the same time. If necessary, I will probably fast, uh, fast forward this footage. If not, well, enjoy uh, me untightening this. Not really much to enjoy though. So four of the bolts that's on the lower end of the crankshaft use 916s and then the top end where the camshaft is uses half inches. Uh, you know what? Uh, before I kind of break anything, I'm going to go look at the service manual and see if there's something I'm missing here. So it turns out that they are there are two bolts I am missing uh, to remove. And if you look closely, one, two. one two and even more one two so i believe we have to unbolt two bolts that's going into the uh pan and that should be it and then we could we are able to remove the uh, timing cover there are two bolts missing and these are the two bolts if you can see this one this one and this one forget these outer two it's these inner ones
All right, are you guys getting deja vu? Because you guys are in the ba um, same place again uh, as earlier when I was taking off the uh, diamond chain cover bolts. And remove this one final bolt and we should be good to go. Drum roll, please. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that's that's pretty chunky looking. Oh, well, uh, unintentionally threw it off. Oh, yeah. Look at that play. Like, I don't know what these are, but I think these, those are like the little pins that hold the chain in. But look at that. It's easily moving like a quarter of an inch. And, whoa! See that? Yeah, I think that, I think, uh, I think that's, um, not how it should be. This side's tight, since it has, has got some preload on it. But, wow. There you have it. Don't let your chain become like that. Yeah, you know, look, look at that. It just kind of opens up up here. Can you see that? Up here. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised at all if this jumped... Oh man, I could almost pull this off. This is not healthy. That whole thing is moving. Yeah, some of you guys are having a good laugh at this. <laughs> wow, this is kind of amazing and a, well, amazing and not as amazing at the same time because this is my first time seeing a time chain cover and everything like this but this this here and this actually you know what what am i kidding um not this but just the whole thing like what Oh, that's a that's a thick, thick type of gunkin junk in here. It's like varnish or something, thick varnish. Uh, anywho, uh, <laughs> the mm, the crankshaft keyway is pointing to number one, so this is correct, and the keyway should be pointing on the camshaft I do I have no idea yet on that so I'll have to figure that out later uh, so from the looks of it everything's sound for how loose it is like oh wow and there you guys have it. You guys saw it firsthand. Yeah, I think this thing is way overdue. And uh, I suppose uh, let's start pre-soaking the uh, the new double roller timing set before we install it. <laughs> 